Ice baths are all the rage, and mostly for no reason. Uh, not entirely. There is a strong psychological benefit in my opinion, but there is actually no substantial physical benefit to ice baths. Now, let me explain. For those of you who are getting mad, give me the benefit of the doubt and hear me out for a couple of minutes here. So, the initial idea of icing came from Dr. Merkin in 1978, where he introduced rice, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And that was for any acute response to exercise. So when you exercise or when you got injured, you should rest the tissue, elevate the tissue, compress it, put ice on it, and that will knock out all of the inflammation. And as we knew at the time, no inflammation is going to be a good thing. This is still the dogma that some people stick to and even some professionals in the field stick to. I'm not entirely sure why. Because in 2015, Dr. Merkin came out and he actually said, I was wrong because icing takes a helpful degree of inflammation and it knocks it down to zero. So I went, I did a bit of research and there was, and excuse me for butchering your names, there's a paper done by Dr. Sayaloya and Dr. Schwarzendruber um, and they tackled this exact topic. But the way that they put it, I really like this, is that the body has to go through three levels of recovery for a tissue to heal from any level of cellular damage. And number one is inflammation. Inflammation is a good thing when it is in the acute sense. The reason being, inflammation comes in and its job is to reduce damage. You have damaged muscle cells, you've got dead muscle cells, and something needs to come in to get rid of those. And so something comes in called macrophages. Macrophages both come in and clear out all the damaged tissue, and they also leave IGF-1. We'll talk about IGF-1 in a sec, but I do want to clarify, macrophages are hugely harmful if they're entering a tissue without damage. And this is where we have to dissociate acute inflammation from chronic inflammation. If you have chronic inflammation, macrophages will go into a healthy tissue with no damage otherwise, and start trying to find dead cells to clean up and it'll start eating away at the tissue. This is where we have something like tendonitis that exists for six months, 12 months, 18 months, and all of a sudden just something pops. It's because you've had macrophages in there slowly eating away at the tissue, making it more susceptible to injury and damage. So back to the role of macrophages in a helpful sense, they clear out the dead cells, they bring in IGF-1. Now for those who don't know IGF-1, it is massively useful in cellular recovery at any level, okay? Whether it's bones, muscles, anything. IGF-1 is really the king of everything to do with muscle growth and repair. And that's coming from your macrophages, which is coming from your inflammation. The important dissociation that these two authors make is around inflammation and swelling. And again, I think it's really well put. Inflammation and swelling are not necessarily synonymous with each other. Swelling is basically that you've got the, these dead cells that have built up and your body is pumping fluid into the area to try to clear out that tissue. But since we're not clearing the, the dead cells out as fast as we're bringing in fluid to try to repair, you're gonna end up really big and really bloated, for lack of a better word, and you're gonna end up with a very swollen area of your body. The discoloration is also because you, you, you can't catch up fast enough to the clotting process that has to happen. When any tissue tears, there's gonna be bleeding to some extent, but usually we can clot that fast enough that we have no idea that it's happening. But that's why when you actually tear a muscle, you get huge amounts of swelling, discoloration, because you can't clear out as fast as you can bring it in. Now, Dr. Merkin, when he came out and he said, rice is not the correct um, protocol, he gave different advice, which is basically the exact same thing, but just take out the ice. Compression is still good. Elevation is still good. You definitely still need to rest tissues if they're actively damaged, which I half agree with. And this is going to be the protocol moving forward. So the inflammation is step number one in repairing a tissue. And you need to go through step number one to get to step number two, which is your repair. This is when we have the nutrients go into the muscle in this case, and it's going to repair the muscle and make that muscle tissue whole again. After step number two is done, we go through remodeling where we have both a neural component and a physical component of Wolf's Law. The body will adapt to the stimulus placed on it, given that it has sufficient time to rest and recover. So 
This could be that you're doing bench press, your triceps are damaged, your triceps are built back in a way that will make you a better bench presser, your neural patterns are made, so we have motor units dedicated to bench pressing, and this is how we make progress. This is the whole physiology of being able to get stronger. And now to cycle this all the way back around, if we were to ice, icing kills not only uh, swelling, but kills inflammation. We don't get IGF-1 because we don't get macrophages. If we don't get macrophages in IGF-1, we don't have the cellular signaling to go to the repair stage. And if we don't have the repair stage, there's no way for us to get to the remodeling stage because we're trying to remodel a damaged tissue. So long story short, we need to go through this method and icing is not useful in a physical sense. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the potential psychological benefits of ice baths because that's something that I do believe in and it's actually something that has me interested in potentially using that moving forward for the psychological benefit. When it comes to your strength, to your muscle gain, muscle development, hopping in an ice bath is not going to be useful. If this is all confusing, there is a lot to digest when it comes to exercise and nutrition and recovery. I put out as much content as I possibly can to be able to help you guys out. And there's a few ways that I do that. One of those ways is through my YouTube member page where there are dozens and dozens of videos just like this one that go into a lot more detail, full hour webinars that I've done with different group coaching teams and they are designed to help you. It's five bucks a month. You pay five bucks once, you're gonna have them all. Please stick around after, but you will have them all. If you want a little bit more help, you want a program, go ahead and check out the programs on my website. We'll link them in the description and go learn. Every one of my programs comes with a PDF and the program running alongside. So I hope this has helped you and I would love in the comments for you to say, do you buy into the cold therapy? Do you use cold tubs yourself? Is this something that you're gonna continue using moving forward or have I started to shift your brain. One of the most important things is that we're always developing our opinions. I always say, if you haven't changed your opinion from 12 months ago on anything, it's because, not because you're smart, but because you're done growing. And if you're done growing, there is no space for you to improve. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Lift heavy and be kind. We will catch you next time. As per usual, merch, merch link in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll catch you next time.